Simplifiers, welcome back to Organizing with Simple Solutions, where today I am in Oakwood, Ohio, talking to my good friend, whose name I can't ever pronounce right, <laughs> Rose Lounsbury. You did it! Yay! Yeah, did it. And we're going to talk about momming, minimalism, and multiples, because this mama here has triplets. Yes, count them. One, two, three. And she just wrote a super awesome book that is currently available on Amazon and was an Amazon bestseller called Less. So we're going to talk a little bit about minimalism. But the first thing I want to talk to you about, because I, I talk to moms a lot and they are trying to do everything. I think there's this opinion mm -hmm. out there that we have to be the mom that does it all. And I want to stress to moms Pick a thing that you really want to instill, a value mm -hmm. or a, a skill that you want to instill in your kids. My thing is feeding my kids good food, so I want them to eat healthy. I focus on getting them to eat meals and eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. For you, as a mom of three kids, what is your mom thing? Well, I would say that my mom thing is schedules and routines. And I think part of that is because I had three babies at <laughs> once, so there really was no other option. I had to have a schedule and a routine when they were babies. For sure. Yes. But they're eight years old now, and i found that that is something that has carried over. So, you know, I'm pretty big on having a set bedtime, a set wake-up time. You know, in the morning when they get up, you do this, this, and this before school. When you come home from school, there's this, this, and this before you play. After dinner, we do this, this, and this. And I find that it makes the family just run better because everybody knows what to expect. And it also allows you to actually have more freedom for creativity because there's not chaos and people running around and wondering where things are and what they're supposed to be doing. So... Schedules are my thing. Well, and as a former teacher, like, you know that kids need structure. Yes. So, I mean, do you feel like any of that has influenced that need in your family or yeah. the fact that you emphasize that with your kids? Yeah, as a teacher, I was always very structured with my students. And I always said being a teacher prepared me for having triplets because I understood what it's like to kind of have to do crowd control. And you're not, like, one-on-one. -on -one. You're, like, zone defense. So you've got to... <laughs> you know, try to shoot for the middle and, and try to reach everybody. And so I think teaching definitely helped me be a mom of multiples a little bit better. Okay, do you have any scheduling tips for people with kids, whether it's multiples or, you know, just people that have kid, one kid, you know, scheduling, some people yeah. just aren't very good at it. Well, I would say pick the thing that is a trouble spot, a tension spot. Like if getting out the door in the morning is a tension spot, Break down the things that you need the kids to do and try to not have more than five things oh, okay. because that's hard for them and for you to remember. And once you've got your maybe three to five things, like your absolute must-have things, find a way to make it obvious to them. For my boys, I came up with a song that worked for those five things. My daughter is a very visual learner, and I sang that song to her for like two years, and she never got it. <laughs> She's like, Mom, so, stop singing. So I had to make her a chart, a visual chart that she could cover up with Velcro so that she knew what to do. So come up with your steps and then fit the um, steps to the child. So they might need visuals. They might need you know, auditory learning. They might actually need something they pick up and touch and move so that they know now I've done this thing, now I'm on to the next thing. So realize that one size fits all is not going to work no. for all kids. No. But if you find your trouble spots, break it down into three to five steps and then find a way to make those steps obvious and also have a reward of some sort at the end. Um, my kids know that when they're done with everything in the morning for school, they can play on the iPad. When they get home from school, when they do all the steps, they can have a snack. So the end of the routine is something that is fun or nice um, that they're looking forward to. And I think that works a little bit for adults, too. If yes. you reward yourself, yes, reward when, you, yourself. when you do the stuff Absolutely. that you need to get done. Absolutely. All right, so switching gears a little bit, you just wrote a book about minimalism, yes. which I find in talking to some of my clients can be a kind of a scary thought like right. the idea that you know there's a lot of misconceptions out there mm -hmm. about what minimalism is so what do you find in talking to people either about your book or about minimalism is the biggest misconception that's out there I think the biggest misconception is that people who are minimalist have homes that are austere or cold that there's nothing on their walls that it doesn't look like anyone lives there that it looks like an art gallery and if you're in my house right yeah, now, right? right? And there are things on my walls and there are pictures on my fridge. There are toys in the toy bins over yes, here. I can attest to that. There's even toys on the floor that are <laughs> not picked up. So um, I think the idea for me is trying to teach people that minimalism is actually just a way to simplify your life, to make your life run better so you can do the things you want to do instead of picking up all the time or feeling stressed out all the time. So you just minimize down to what you need and love, and that's going to be different for everybody. 
If you're an artist, you're going to need and love maybe different things than someone who is a mechanic or someone who is a teacher or someone who does interior design. So realize it's relative, it's going to look different for everybody, but your home should actually become a haven of your most favorite, prized, most wonderful things. And that's the kind of home I think most of us want to live in. Most people don't want to live in a cold, austere no, type of environment. No. Well, and I think what I tell people, because I wouldn't call myself a minimalist, but I feel like like when I read your book and yes. if I watch videos, like I, I put a lot of those things into practice and have for a long time. And I think to me, it's about living with intention. Yes. Like the things that I buy serve a purpose, like I love them or I need them. It's not like just... I have never been a girl that can shop. And I know you right. talk about that right. in your book about mm -hmm. how you would shop. Like for me personally, and I never called it anything. I just was like, I hate going and taking my clothes off in a public <laughs> place and putting on That's other clothes. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> okay. So if somebody is inspired either by your book or by watching this video or by watching something else about minimalism and they want to get started, where is a good place for them to start? The best place to start is with your own stuff. Okay, so I can't yeah. take my husband's stuff no, out. No, you can't. I can't. Yeah, don't start with the husband's stuff. Don't start with the kid's stuff because it's hypocritical, right? And they will feel judged and then they will dig in and they will not want to cooperate right. with you. So I always say start with the areas under your jurisdiction. So for most people, that's their clothing, maybe their beauty products in the bathroom. If you're the person who does the cooking at home, you might start with the kitchen. If you do the woodworking or the uh, handyman things at home, you might start with the garage. But you start with the things that you can control and you have absolute say over those things and then you let your example kind of affect the other people in the house and then when you approach them to say hey you know what would you like my help to organize or go through your toys or would you like help to go through your old t-shirts honey it, it comes from a much better place right. than if you go in there and say we need to get rid of some of these toys you don't play with or we need to get rid of some of these old t-shirts nobody's going to go along with you if you do it that way so start with yourself and let your effect just ripple out from there and I also, too, emphasize with the moms that I work with to not go behind your kids' back and do it because I feel like you're not teaching them the lesson. Like, even though they may not get rid of everything that you feel like, right. you're working on it. And I feel like everything in organizing, whether you're minimizing or you're just decluttering, it's, it's practice. If you don't know how to do it, you need to practice it. So, like yeah. you're saying, going behind people's backs and getting rid of stuff is not helping them learn that skill or hone right. that skill at all. It's not. Although I will tell people, if their kids are under the age of five, I will go in with them and help them do the toys. Because kids under the age of five aren't really going to remember that much or the mom no. knows enough to know which ones they will and won't remember. But if your child is over the age of five, they absolutely must be involved because yeah. they will remember a lot. And they will feel, you run the risk of them feeling betrayed um, if they feel that you got rid of their things without their knowledge. So. Absolutely. I, um, I talked to my moms about the um, one to ten principle. And if everything is a ten, then nothing is a ten anymore because... Right. It, there's no longer a priority or a value to that item. So we need to teach our kids how to value mm -hmm. things. Like, is this piece of paper with like one marker scratch right, across right. it the same as this, like the very first picture you ever colored in kindergarten? Like, yes. it doesn't have the same weight. So right. I think that's great. So if people wanted to learn more from you about minimalism, I hear you're teaching yes. a class that's starting I soon I'm online. Teaching. I'm teaching an online course and it's called The Less Method. So what it does is it actually breaks down the four steps that I lead all of my clients through. And it's also in my book, um, <laughs> the four steps that I use. Um, but I take you through your house over six weeks. So we meet online on Facebook Live in a group on Sunday nights and I take you through your house. Every week there is a goal. We post before and after pictures. We support each other. We cheer each other on so it's fun. And um, you have a definite goal and definite steps to take to declutter different areas of your house. And at the end of six weeks, if you followed along with us, you pretty much will have decluttered your entire house in that time. Yay. Yeah. So it starts, um, my first round starts October 8th, um, but I will be doing it again in January. And I the, imagine this being something that I will do regularly. So you can always kind of jump in um, if you're close to the start date of any of the classes. Awesome. So if you are interested in joining Rose's class that starts on the 8th of October, I will link to it in the description below so that you can check out all the information about that. I will also link to her best-selling book, Less, and you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about Rose's Less Method and the way that she went from 
not minimalist to minimalist and as a mom and so you can check that all out in her book thank you so much for letting me come to your house this was awesome super fun and be sure to subscribe right there so that you can get all of my organizing tips and simplifying ideas for you and your family. And I will catch you next time on Organizing with Simple Solutions. Talking with my good friend, bleh, bleh, bleh. See, I'm nervous about saying your name wrong. And my good friend, Rose Lonsberry. Lonsberry, how do you say it? <laughs>